in this new age, with the nature of conflict being and confrontation being what you described, do these international institutions still have the same value? Or are issues in terms such as collective security now becoming somewhat outdated? Um, no, most certainly not outdated. Um, and it's not such a new age. Um, the, the great coalition or alliance, as it's properly called, of NATO is an example of a, the greatest confrontation of all in our lifetime. We didn't ever have it. We call it the Cold War. It's absolute nonsense. It was never a war. It was one long confrontation. And we built NATO to do this. NATO is the product of a confrontation, not of a conflict. And one of the reasons it struggles now is that its whole machinery was built up to manage a confrontation and to show collective intent and, uh, uh, and so forth and not necessarily to conduct a conflict of the types we have now. Um, so, first of all, uh, this isn't so new. Uh, what is new is that we're conducting these confrontations at much lower levels, below these massive strategic levels. And we do have to do them internationally because the very nature of the um, things that we fear stretch across uh, our boundaries, result of the increase in global communications, basically. Um, and um, I think the way to understand it is that uh, we used to have an understanding in industrial war that a strong defence gave you security of your people. For America, on the 11th of September 2001, that understanding was breached forever. And America discovered it was insecure. And, but being strong in defense, America goes and does something that uses its strength, which has not necessarily improved its security. And we'd have to start to understand that in war amongst the people, these are security operations, not defensive operations, in their conceptual base. And that therefore you're, you're bound to have to cooperate and collaborate with all of those in your security zone, which in today's world is very largely a global affair.